reggae just extra with Ross Dennis. One of the most outstanding defining relationships in the life of Gregory Isaacs was his solid friendship with reggae superstar Dennis Brown. Gregory Isaacs and Dennis Brown referred to themselves as blood brothers. As a matter of fact, Dennis Brown hardly calls Gregory by his name. It is always Big Breda. They did everything together, even music, and thought highly of each other. My name is Ras Dennis and I welcome you to another video by Reggae Just Extra. On today's episode, we shall be talking about the relationship between Gregory Isaacs and Dennis Brown and their long battle with addictions. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, kindly click on the subscription button, like, and hit the notification bell to be the first to watch our next video. Gregory Isaacs, the son of Enid Murray and Lester Isaacs, remains an enigmatic figure over a decade after his death. Known for donning his trademark fedora atop his head, the cool ruler wore other hats the public knew little of, recovering drug addict and tormented insomniac superstar. His close friend, or simply call it, Big Breda as Dennis Brown normally call him had the same struggle for years. Fred Locke once said this in an interview, Please listen. Extensive tour and some white guys came. The promoter said, Dennis, you're not happening. You are tired. We look like we have to cut the tour. And then, then I said, why? So you're not singing good and you're tired. You need something to keep you up. Then I said, why? Man said, I'm sitting on them, the white man, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm thinking I go on with them thing. And I said, Dennis, and Dennis, he resists. I resist as, as much as I could. So, my, um, Conrad Cooper said one night, Dennis decided to indulge in the snorting. And when he did that, he go out there and sing like a bird and was up. <laughs> you see? And he so said, nobody can tell him, he said, no, nah, help him. So, Conrad Cooper said before the tour ended, Dennis Brown was a seasoned crackhead. He moved from snorting to beating the ball. And the guys were saying, yes, Dennis, you see how you're happening now? You know? And the man come back to me and say, finish with music. And destroy the beauty of me you love from my little baby. And Dennis Brown feel like him couldn't function without that. And Greg Rice like used to say, Dennis loves the shit, but the shit don't love him. Because he can't take it. <laughs> See? So believe me, so I used to say to Dennis, I used to say to Dennis one time, you know, and the next artist, so I don't want to call his name, because Dennis Brown is a known one, and you mentioned that. What other artists get involved with, I know, and they must sing good from them. I have to say to them, you're making eight songs before you start to use crack. And you think crack make you sing better? I don't understand how you think so. You know, it's a, it's a mind thing. You know, so a lot of them get, um, start to indulge in it and get hooked. Because them things, it better you get hooked on herb. Weed. Weed now make you have teeth, all your parents think for you. You know, most people smoke weed never got, got to that stage at no time. So, you know, Dennis, them, um, sorry for said Dennis really, him, 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 hasten him, him downfall. So, so did Gregory. Dennis Brown and Gregory Isaacs were the best of friends. Dennis always looked at Gregory as the best writer ever, while Gregory thought Dennis was the best performer ever. It might interest you to know that after Bob Marley's untimely death in 1981, both Dennis Brown and Gregory Isaacs became the most popular male reggae singers. Gregory never had problem of airplay nor felt overshadowed by the industry's adoration of Dennis Brown. They were just best friends up to when Dennis made his transition in 1999, 20 years after being with Gregory. When Dennis Brown died, it was reported that Gregory Isaacs cried like a child because they'd lived like brothers and over the years recorded many songs and albums. Gregory Sings Dennis and Dennis Sings Gregory In 1984, producer Prince Jammy, equally intrigued with the changing sounds of dancehall, brought Isaacs into the studio for the superb Let's Go Dancing, while also pairing the singer with Dennis Brown for Two Bad Superstars Meet. The latter proved so popular that a second set, Judge Not, appeared the next year. The two singers duet again on a track on Isaac's 1995 solo album, 
private beach party, which also boasted an exquisite feeling Irie, which paired him with Carlene Davis. The album was produced by Gussie Clark, who later produced Rumors, and of course, J.C. Lodge's breakout crossover hit, Telephone Love. In 1989, Clark reunited Isaacs and Brown for the No Contest album, Dot Misses. June Isaac said she was surprised that Gregory did not make it onto the controversial Rolling Stones 200 Greatest Singers of All Time list, published earlier this year. Dennis Brown was the best-ranked Jamaican entertainer on Rolling Stone's list, coming in at number 67. Toots Hibbert of Toots and the Maytals was placed at number 94, finishing four places ahead of the King of Reggae, Bob Marley, who was ranked at number 98. As earlier heard from Fred Locks, both superstars were battling with cocaine addiction for several years. Isaacs once openly admitted to drug addiction to the press in the 1980s, at a time when such a revelation could be detrimental to one's career. Gregory lamented the long slide into addiction that destroyed friendships, compromised his Rastafarian ideals, complicated his love life, damaged his family bonds, and eventually even almost destroyed his musical gift. It's the greatest college I've been to, the cocaine high school, but also the most expensive school fees that I have ever paid. I learned a lot from it, both good and bad. I wouldn't encourage anybody to try it, Isaac said. Mrs. Jim Isaacs recalled how the cool ruler battled his demons, without success, as she witnessed the carnage of a crack cocaine addiction firsthand. The cocaine addiction made for a hellish lifestyle replete with manic episodes, crippling insomnia, and drug-fueled confrontations. Mrs. Isaacs tried to put her foot down and force him out of a life of addiction with a combination of tough love and gentle coaxing. Mrs. June Isaacs was his night nurse, and the song Night Nurse by Gregory Isaacs was just a way of paying homage to her. On the other hand, Dennis Brown equally had a history of drug use behind his success, but he doesn't like discussing about it. He was addicted to crack cocaine. He was allegedly seen backstage at concerts in the United States with drug paraphernalia in open view. Dennis Brown stated that the drug rumors were a constant detraction from his career. He looked for companionship with people that approved and stayed away from the people that did not approve. DJ ranking Joe Jackson knew Dennis Brown well and was aware of his drug problem. Unfortunately, Jamaica and indeed the world lost this musical treasure far too soon as Dennis Brown, the crown prince of reggae, died on July 1, 1999, at age 42, from complications caused by respiratory problems while Gregory Isaacs died on October 25, 2010, at age 59, following a battle with lung cancer. This is Ras Dennis thanking you for watching this episode. Kindly leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. However, until we meet again, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to keep you updated on our latest video. Much effort is made to ensure all materials and reggae gist extras videos fall within the guidelines of fair use. No copyright infringement is intended. If you are or represent the copyright owner of any materials accidentally used in this video and have an issue with its use, please contact me, rasdennisinfo at gmail.com and I will respond as soon as possible. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis.